Okay, welcome back to the channel. Um, as you can see, this isn't one of my normal videos. Normally I'm uh, taking videos of trails a ride, making vlogs. Um, last weekend I had a bit of a bump on the bike. Um, fell down quite hard. And unfortunately, I just haven't been able to get back out on the bike as of yet. Um, so I decided to sit down and to kind of um, get over the, the, the slight down of not being on a bike is do something a little bit differently. And I want to do a product uh, review. I want to do a product review of the Fox Pro Frame um, because it's something I own, it's something I've used well, I think I know quite a lot about it. Um, also, when I was looking at um, buying a Fox Pro Frame, it was difficult to find a video of people who'd actually ridden with one, especially in the UK and the Scottish climate. Um, so really I thought I would produce one and I hope that for anyone who actually uh, stumbles upon this, it's actually helpful and helps you make an informed decision about buying a Fox Pro Frame. So to start off and just to reassure you, I am a Fox Pro Frame owner. I got this in 2018. Unfortunately, due to the accident the weekend, um, I fell quite hard onto rocks, hit the side of the helmet, dented it, but unfortunately the actual inner um, kind of um, frame itself is split with a hairline fracture running at the back, so I have had to retire this. Um, every cloud though uh, means that I have been able to order a 2019 Pro Frame and I haven't actually really uh, used this or played around with it, so I'm going to do a bit of a reveal. Oh yeah, she's looking good. So this is a 2019 Fox Pro Frame. Now just in case you were worried, um, my understanding is the actual models don't change. So a 2018 Pro Frame is effectively the same as a 2019 Pro Frame. What does change is the kind of styling and the colour schemes. Now, this is a kind of colour scheme that works really well on my bike, so I absolutely love it. I'm looking at it now just going, this looks absolutely amazing. Um, I suppose the only downside is if you get to a year where you can't find a colour scheme. Although there's quite a range, I believe, so you should be able to find something. With the helmet, we get a few different things. So, <coughs> we get a nice little carry bag, protective bag. These are actually pretty handy if you're like do not lift Dave's, you put the helmet in the car, it does stop again a wee bit scuffed and you want to look after these things. Also it comes with various pad inserts and just to explain that, although the helmet is sized um, and I ride with a medium, you can change the thickness of the pads to adjust that fit and that's really handy. Um, it does help you just narrow that fit down because obviously you know no head is exactly the same. One little thing I would say there though is Make sure when you buy any helmet, whether it's a pro frame or you just choose something else, go and get it tried on because actually, you know, it's, it's everyone's head's different. They're producing these at a mass scale. Don't buy something that doesn't fit right because that's really important in terms of protection. Okay, so I'm going to move on to the kind of bits of the helmet that I think are the kind of real selling points and then also the bits that I, I, I find a little bit annoying or, or I would change. So... First of all is the protection. It comes with a DH certification, so you know that the actual helmet is structurally sound. Also comes with MIPS, um, which really is just a, a kind of a device you see here inside, if you can make out that kind of yellow plastic. Now that plastic actually sits separate from the outer body. It means you've got like a kind of slip plate. What that does in theory is when you crash, it stops that kind of rotation of the head so much, there's a bit of play in it. That stops kind of sort of rotational injuries to the brain. Whether or not that works, I don't actually know. All I know is at the weekend I hit my head hard enough to give myself some double vision and to give me some slurred speech. But actually in terms of a few days later, I don't have anything wrong with my head. Whereas I do have um, some bits wrong with shoulder and hip. So actually this helmet, um, the protection on it, I feel, is really good. Um, to the point where I would not ride enduro in a half lid anymore. I would always uh, wear something like this. The other big winner for me is the weight. Now, despite it's been a full face helmet, and I think pretty well protected, um, only weighs 750 grams for this model, which is not a lot. When you're out on the bike, I have to say you just don't feel that way at all. You know, you move your head around, you don't feel it. So I really like that. 
I personally also like the ventilation. I want to say something about this though because I've seen a few videos and, and people claim that you know this is no different from wearing a half lid. I actually bought it because I was wanting the protection of full face and I kind of was hoping that also you know I would have no um, problems with the ventilation you know I'd be as cool as I was in the half lid. In truth you're not, you are warmer and it, for me that's common sense. If you notice here uh, around the sides, so around the cheeks, around here, it's quite built up and actually that's where you feel the additional heat, just here. What I would say though is in terms of like getting air in, you don't notice it and I think it is actually a really um, well ventilated helmet for what it is. Um, to the point where I know on like uplift days and stuff where I've not had any pedalling, sometimes when you start flying down the hill and that cold air is coming into the helmet in winter, actually quite cool on the top of your head. I don't have hair protection either. So I do think the ventilation is a big selling point for this helmet. It's not going to be exactly the same as a half lid, but it's pretty close. The fourth thing I really like about this Fox stuff at the moment is the looks. Um, I just think these look really badass. I think they're really kind of aggressive looking. I like the lines in them. I think the color schemes at the moment are really good. Um, it shouldn't be a massive consideration, but it is a consideration when you're purchasing. Um, the final thing I wanted to mention, or final two things, minor things, but quite important. I make a lot of GoPro videos where I'm kind of getting um, point of view footage. I run a chin strap and got that idea off my trail rider and the likes. What this open uh, face bit does, it allows you to just buy one of these like cheap little kind of Velcro helmet straps. I just Velcro it on. Mean you don't have to do any permanent changes to your pro frame, which is really good, and you also get really nice footage. Another thing I really like are these little clips here. So this um, clip to fasten the helmet is actually a little magnetic thing. Just clicks on and off. I don't know if you can see that. What's really cool is it's such a nice little action that even when you come down the hill, you can just use one hand to um, undo the strap, which is really nice. Gets me around now, I'll talk about the kind of um, cons, the things that aren't so good. So, I've kind of mentioned already, temperature, okay? Genuinely, if you think this is gonna be as cool as a half lead, you might be disappointed. You are gonna feel it be a bit warmer. What I would say is when I ride in duo, I don't tend to be like hitting the climbs at 100%. I tend to be saving that for the descents. So maybe climbing 80%, in which case I don't think temperature is an issue. If, however, you're maybe just going to go and smash out trails at cross-country pace, I would be considering whether this is for you and I'd be balancing this, the, the safety against the, 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 the extra temperature. Um, another thing that I don't find that amazing, even though the strap is really good, uh, sorry, the fastener, I should say, I find over time the strap loosens, okay? And that's not great if you're not keeping on top of that. You want a, a tight strap if you're gonna have a crash in that. So I don't think the design there is perfect. I think that could be improved. The other thing I'd like to bring up is the lack of crash replacement. Obviously you buy these uh, lids to keep you safe and they work really well. A lot of the other companies do a crash replacement, which is like a heavily discounted helmet. Fox don't do that and I think when you're paying sort of uh, £225 RRP they should really be doing that um, and that brings me to my very final point which is the cost they're not cheap um, I personally think it's worth paying the money uh, just for the protection but um, it is a lot of money and yeah it does make crashing really expensive so I hope uh, that kind of um, makes sense from a kind of rider's point of view. If you have any questions about this video or any comments, just leave them in the comments down below. Um, I'll happily answer questions about it. Um, if you want to see uh, less videos like this and more videos of just riding, please check out the channel, check out the videos on there. And of course, if you enjoy what you're seeing, give it a wee like and, and subscribe. Um, likewise, Give me some feedback on a kind of product video. I've never done anything like this before. Um, it'd be really good to know um, how, I've, how I've kind of done and, 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 and what could be um, improved. Um, always keen to try and make videos that are a bit more accessible and a bit more interesting. Nice one. Okay. Hope you enjoyed it. Let me know your thoughts. And I'll see you later. Cheers.